my name is Robin Ladd. I'm Dave Weinrich. Okay, so I am Virginia Efta. Um, my name is Mary Jane Dodge. And uh, my degree comes from a background in physics and uh, secondary education. I also had the opportunity to do my student teaching in a planetarium in Rochester, Minnesota, and worked in a planetarium when I was in college. I came to MSUM in 1983, as a title at that time was planetarium coordinator. And I was there until 2014, when I retired after 31 years. So um, doing the math, I see that I have been at the I was at have been at the MSU Planetarium more than half of its history. And I graduated um, in 1982, and I got a bachelor's of science degree um, in mathematics with a emphasis in secondary education. And I um, came from rural North Dakota, where we could really see the stars. Um, I went to school from 1970 to 1974. And it was one of those times where I had a fantastic teacher when the teacher changes your life. And that was Dr. James Wirtz. But I wanted to get a job at a planetarium. But my first job turned out to be the assistant director of a planetarium in Hutchinson, Kansas. So we ended up building the most unbelievable space museum. It's called the Cosmosphere and Space Center right now. And it, it had the biggest uh, collection of NASA artifacts outside of the Smithsonian. We had over, you know, 100, at the time it was 100 million, but by the time I left, it must have been 200 million dollars worth of NASA artifacts. Like we had a, we have the Apollo 13 flown command module. And let's see, I was at MSU from 1970 to 1976. I couldn't decide what I wanted to be when I grew up. So <laughs> my, the degree was titled um, the physical and spiritual universe. Um, the role that I played in the planetarium initially um, Mary Jane Butler and I were asked to work in the planetarium um, as like student work pro, uh, program. Okay. And um, we were asked by Dr. Wirtz, James Wirtz, to, to do that. And we both were like thrilled. We were like so excited. That was like the coolest thing ever. And uh, so that's uh, then after, after I had graduated, I moved to Detroit, Michigan. Currently, I mean, I am a, a movement therapist now, so. So when I had the opportunity to take an intro to astronomy um, a class at college, I jumped right in. My, it was my first semester, my freshman year, um, fall of 1978. And then a part of that class, of course, it was you know, to learn some constellations and, and objects and stars. And I loved that. And so I took the second course in astronomy, um, which allowed you to also then um, be somebody that taught those for the first astronomy class. And then later on, I was able to my junior and senior year do the field trips for elementary schools. Um, and I love that. So, um, so that's what I did. 1977, I went to a planetarium international conference in Vancouver, British Columbia. And I met this at the trade show, I was walking through and I heard about IMAX. The most prominent IMAX filmmaker in the world is in California, Laguna Beach. And he directed the film To Fly. He's the one that put IMAX on the map. He hired me to work at his company. So I've been making films with him. And then in the last five or six years, I've started producing films. I, I produced a film called Dream Big, which was about engineering and uh, for the IMAX world. And I'm right now producing kind of a sequel to that one. It's called, it's an engineering film also, but it's called 
cities of the future. And we're now producing a film that of what it's gonna look like 50 years from now, of what our cities are gonna be like, you know, because of climate change and all the energy problems we have. So it's been a really fantastic career and it started with the, at MS with the planetarium. that working with the audiences uh, was a favorite part. I mean, that's why I got involved in, the, in education even. Uh, when I was originally, when I went to college at Luther College in Decor, Iowa, I thought maybe I'd go into research, science, maybe biology, but right away, I started working in the planetarium. And I found out I had a certain, it gave me joy, it gave me pleasure to work with groups and to explain perhaps somewhat difficult topics in a way that they could absorb it. I produced a planetarium show, like a really multimedia show. And I remember this really well. This is what I remember. One of the things I really remember, it was called across the sea of stars and it was about interstellar space travel <laughs> i remember i used david bowie's album space oddity and then we went to the moon and i remember this too because apollo 15 had the the astronauts on apollo 15 had taken this incredible moon panorama shot of the moon and the, one of the mountains of the moon, I think it was Mount Hadley, um, it was in the shot, it was spectacular. And I got that panorama. So it was like we were on the moon. Um, as part of being uh, secondary education, we were required to take an American, a Native American Indian course at, uh, this, at college. And as a part of that, we had to do a project that shows something about the col culture of Native Americans. So I was able to narrow in on the constellation stories um, that were a part of that culture. And I brought the entire uh, class in for my project. Um, and so that was just a, a great memory. You know, actually, one of the first things that does come to my mind is the, um, the work that the AV department did. They're quite remarkable in what they managed to make that planetarium do. But then also with the programs that were done um, for the children from out of, like, out of town. I mean, there were some times when the kids would ask the most insightful questions. And I just go like, oh my God, I can't answer that. You know, at that <laughs> time I was kind of like, whoa. But it was so exciting to see that, that there was this incredible interest and dynamic in that on their part. I think my favorite age was probably fourth graders because they had a certain amount of basic education so you could talk about some fairly advanced topics and they would have very excellent questions, but they still had that natural enthusiasm that the preschoolers and the early elementary had. So when you'd ask a question, you know, you get lots of hands that people would want to answer. Definitely the school field trips. Um, you know, the technology there back in the early 80s was, wasn't what it is today. Uh, but we were able to do like a panorama of the, the moon surface. And so we took rocket ships to the moon. Uh, we actually uh, covered the planetarium uh, in clouds and did lightning and um, thunder. And then also we had squirt bottles in the back of the panel and we would squirt the whole entire planetarium and the kids would just squeal. Um, I just, I loved every part of those uh, field trips. That was so much fun for me. Working with some of the student workers. Uh, I taught some classes at MSUM, astronomy classes, 
but in a big class, you really don't get to know students individually. And it was a lot of, um, it was very worthwhile. I've got, got a great satisfaction from working with student workers, I suppose over the 31 years that I was there, I probably worked with at least 50, 60 students. And my philosophy was that it was, uh, it wasn't just that they were filling a job. It wasn't just that they were, you know, there to run uh, shows or to teach constellations to the astronomy classes. It was part of their development. I remember many of my students, student workers would come and at the beginning of their work, they were petrified to even speak in front of a group, even to do the, the task of pointing out the constellations. And I would tell them, you're in the dark, nobody can see you. <laughs> and it was wonderful to see over three, four, five years, the development with some of them, you know, started out knowing very little about astronomy. And after four or five years, they could give shows as good, if not better than, than I, what I was doing. So that was a gratifying experience to work with uh, students. I remember the constellations to this day because when you teach the constellations every day for like two years, you know, it gets ingrained in your head. But I think the thing the most gratifying was just the joy. It just the the it was the absolute ability to do something you love and the happiness and joy that comes along with doing something you love. And I couldn't believe that I could do this and get paid for it. That being able to teach in the dark experience, <laughs> it builds your confidence as then going out and teaching. So it definitely helped me becoming a math teacher because you got rid of that kind of fear because no one was really looking at you. They're looking mm -hmm. at the stars. So mm -hmm. that was really great. But then later on, um, after we, we lived in Florida for a long time where the... Uh, you know, the light pollution is terrible. Um, we, when we retired, my husband and I, we moved to uh, Tennessee, Southwest of Nashville, and we're out in the boonies. And so we joined the Nashville Astronomy Club, which we would have never done if it hadn't been for my experience in the planetarium. And, and so um, because we're in the boonies, the club comes out to our house for all kinds of big events, because you can see the stars. Um, so I am so grateful for my experience at, at college with the, um, the planetarium. And I think my whole life, the planetarium has really influenced my whole life. I still look at the stars with joy and wonder. I still follow the planets and what they're doing. I, I love looking up in the morning when it's dark at, because I walk all the time and seeing the planets where they are in the sky and you know hearing about the latest meteor or comet that's coming on and just there are just so many things that I just truly, truly enjoy um, that really stem from my time at MSU and the planetarium and the physics department. So. Yeah, it's, it has stayed with me my whole life. It started everything and uh, it led, that experience led to a fantastic career that I'm still, still doing. I mean, I should be retired by now, but I'm still enjoying it. I think it can create a lot of uh, interest in young people and I would, I would hope that it would serve to encourage children, young children, or even teenagers to become more interested in the sciences. I, 
I really would like to see that as a possibility for the planetarium to, uh, in its future. Mm -hmm. um, and especially for young women, because I, I know that there's just not enough young women in the sciences. And um, I would really like to see more of that happening. Um, and I do think the planetarium can play a role in that. And also just also to um, bring to awareness of um, the different aspects and the new theories that are happening in um, astronomy in the sciences as well. Well, as I said before, that light pollution, my goodness, most people live in, in places where you cannot see the stars. And so to me, a, planetan a planetarium is essential um, for people to really see the night sky um, and fall in love with it like I have. The planetarium is a unique environment uh, for presenting astronomy and space education. And that's what most people think about when they think about a planetarium, that it's only for astronomy and space education, but it has the potential. It can be used for much, much more. Uh, digital projectors can put anything up on the dome. Art, music, uh, interior of the cell, the, a voyage out to the edge of the universe, anything you can conceive really, you can put up on the dome. That is super important because there's nothing more important than education, especially now. And you know, back then, education was, that's what I wanted to get into. Like I loved science, I loved astronomy, but for me, the idea of educating the public about astronomy seemed equally as important. I mean, what scientists do and learn and discover and explore, the world needs to know it. So the role of a planetarium is super important to, to inform people of what's going on. So I think the planetarium is still a lot of possibilities. We could say the sky's the limit.